today we're going to be speaking with uh, Dr. Blesser and Spencer Stryker, uh, the creative director of Game Zombie. He's going to be with us, and also uh, Norbert Herber, uh, musician, and myself moderating the webmaster of GameZombie.tv. What is sound? Well, there's two answers to the question. There's the physics and the science and the acoustics, and there's a lot of work that's been done on that. Uh, but there's another part of it, which is what is the experience of sound? What do humans do when they're hearing a sound source or hearing the acoustics or hearing a soundscape, and how do they relate to that sound? Uh, that hasn't actually been studied nearly as much as the physics uh, for a lot of different reasons. And the, the book, Oral Architecture, basically was an exploration of the experience of sound and hearing space. Uh, and sound neurologically is wired in much deeper than vision. Uh, you don't have earlids, you can't turn it off. Uh, you can't control it. Uh, it's just too important for survival, and so it's really wired in very, very deep. You talked about in, was it 18th century France or 17th century France where people had to hear the bell in order to be uh, considered part of the society? Uh, sound was the means of being part of the community. It was hearing the bells, which were signaling time, a uh, call to arms, warnings, peace. You couldn't hear the bells, you didn't know what was going on. There were no newspapers, no telephone. Uh, you wanted to feel connected, you had to hear. Lord Sutler. I used to do an experiment when I was teaching at MIT. Um, I would ask for a volunteer and say, close your eyes and walk towards the wall. And when your nose is six inches from the wall, stop. And the class would laugh and laugh. And I'd say, ah, let's just try it. And about 80% of the students could do it on the first time. And almost everybody could do it with you know, three or four times practicing. You can hear the wall. Uh, you can hear all kinds of things you don't think you can hear. Uh, if I were to tell you, listen to a sound, you, you actually are thinking about the sound source. You might even think of it as the direct sound, the sound that goes from the source to your ears. But when we talked about the example of hearing a low ceiling, the, you're not really attending to the sound itself. You're attending to how the sound got changed by the lowness of the ceiling. Um, the same thing with hearing the wall or hearing the depth of a cave or the resonances in your bathroom. So if you sing in, while taking a shower, you can listen to the singing or you can listen to how the shower stall changes your voice and creates resonances. Let's have some fun listening to a drum refrain in different spaces. Such as a high quality concert hall. bathroom which is small and with hard walls. After a winter storm in the park. And finally in a large church. In this last example, the listener is actually walking away from the stage and we can hear how the musicians are receding. One can also hear distance. Uh, what is the process people use to construct a, a symbolic space in sound? I guess in, like in the instance of a cathedral. Well, it, it's actually almost Pavlovian in the sense that when you hear a certain kind of sound or sound signature acoustics in a certain kind of situation repeatedly over and over again, you, you link the oral experience with the human experience and the two become linked so tightly you're not even aware of it. I would suspect, I mean, to take an extreme example, I suspect if you were a prisoner of war and kept in a confined cell, the acoustics of that cell, if you ever heard them again, would remind you of being a prisoner. But basically, anything that repeats over and over again is going to get late in your unconscious to the experience you're having. So I'm curious if you think there's any sort of connection between the space, as you describe it, in oral ar architecture and one's own personal headspace. Well, headspace is another boundary. So if you put on headphones, you're in your own headspace and the only thing that gets in there acoustically is what's coming out of your headphones. Um, 
and it's a much bigger topic. And there's a Radio World article on my website, which is called Headspace. And the advertising industry and the radio and television industry and the and the internet are all concerned with Headspace because they can't get into your head unless you're willing to let them unless they have a technology that can get in whether you like it or not. And just to give you an example, there's a technology that's floating around that can beam sound in a very narrow beam directly at you and can track you like stalking. There's another article up there. And this is an attempt to prevent you from blocking somebody's message from getting into your headspace. And I'm curious, what is it about the sonic possibility of games or virtual worlds that piques your curiosity as someone who's been writing about oral architecture? Well, this, actually, what, when I wrote the book, which took five years, and I was exploring all the different ways in which oral architecture would play a role, uh, it never struck, struck me that games would be an obvious application uh, for great creating an oral environment. Uh, you know, if you were to think about just simple mechanics of walking around your house, uh, you can actually hear open doors and you can hear low ceilings. Uh, and depending upon where sounds are located, you can identify their origin. Uh, you can orient yourself and feel connected entirely by sound. Well, games are creating a virtual world. And virtual audio right now has been, quote, owned by the surround sound music uh, people. But video games are actually a more obvious example. So in the game environment, um, the sounds that come out are all what I call direct sound. You know, you take, you synthesize a sound, you stick it into the microphone, and it comes out the loudspeaker. But if you think about real life, um, you can't hear a sound without there being a space. You could have in the most sophisticated games that the hero walks into a space and the lights go out, and he's got to navigate the space entirely with his ears.